Okay, in uh, section 5.1, we're going to look at the unit circle, and especially we're going to focus on looking at some specific points in the unit circle, which will be very important because that's how we define the trig functions in 5.2. Okay, in this first problem, uh, does this point lie in the unit circle? Well, it lies in the unit circle if it, if it um, makes the equation true. So let's plug the, po the coordinates into the equation and see if it, uh, if it makes it true. So if you do that, you get 4 fifths plus 1 fifth, which equals 1. So does that point lie on the inner circle? The answer is yes. Okay, the next problem says find the value of y so this point lies in the inner circle. So uh, see if you can do that. I'll give you a hint, there's two answers. Okay, whoops. So when you plug in the point, let's see, the point you plug in is 3 fourths, right? When you square it, you get 9 sixteenths. When you solve for y, you get plus or minus square root of 7 over 4. So what that means is there's actually uh, there's actually two uh, there's two points there's one in the first quadrant and one in the fourth quadrant. Okay, let's keep on going. This turns out to be a really important problem right here uh, for what we're going to talk about in just a minute. We're trying to find the point on the graph of y equals x that also lies in the circle. Notice the x and y coordinate are equal. So how would you find those points? See if you can do that. Okay, so when you do that, you uh, you get 2x squared equals 1, and when you solve for x, notice I did not put plus or minus here because we're in the first quadrant, right? You just get, it's a, x is going to be positive, so is y. But if you rationalize the denominator, you get radical 2 over 2. But that's not the answer. The answer is square root of 2 over 2, comma, square root of 2 over 2. Okay, let's keep on going. Um, in this next one, we're going to talk about the unit circle a little bit more. Uh, the circumference of a circle is 2 pi r, so the circumference of the unit circle is 2 pi. So that means if you go all the way around, you've gone 2 pi units. If you go halfway around, you've gone pi units. If you've gone a quarter of the way around the circle on the circumference, you've gone pi over 2 units. Okay, so the convention we're going to follow is we start at the point 1, 0, and if we go a positive distance, that, that's going to be counterclockwise. If you go a negative distance, that's going to be clockwise. So if you go t equal pi over 2 units, you end up right there. Uh, the point would be 0, 1. If you go pi units, remember it's, it's, it's counterclockwise starting at 1, 0. You go over to negative 1, 0. If you go 3 pi over 2 units, counterclockwise is positive. You get 0, negative 1. And if you go um, 2 pi units, you've gone all the way around. It puts you right back to 1, 0. Negative would be different. With the negative, uh, you, uh, you, just, you just go clockwise. You start at 1, 0 still. So if you go negative pi over 2, you end up at 0, negative 1. If you go negative pi, you end up at negative 1, 0. Negative 3 pi over 2 puts you back up to the point 0, 1. All right, now... Here, I want to talk about some special points. The first point I want to look at is, um, is one we've already seen. This point, radical 2 over 2, comma, radical 2 over 2. It turns out, if, if you take the unit circle, I'm dividing this up into little, these little sector pieces. These are pi over 12 each. So if you go 2 of them, you go on pi over 6. If you go on 3 of them, you go on pi over 4. What's 3 pi over 12? Isn't that pi, uh, pi over 4? If you've gone uh, 4 of them, you've gone pi over 3. And if you've gone all the way up to here, you've gone 6 of these pi over 12 units, which is pi over 2. It's kind of a nice way to think of it. So that, in other words, if you start at 1, 0, and you go pi over 4 units, you end up at radical 2 over 2, comma, radical 2 over 2. Anyway, uh, so what I want to do here is I want, I want to find out what would be the coordinates of these points. These points would be symmetric with uh, pi over 4, but in different quadrants. Remember, in the first quadrant, x is positive, y is positive. In the second quadrant, x is negative, y is positive. Third quadrant, they're both negative. Fourth quadrant, x is positive, y is negative. Anyway, so what you would do then is um, find out the t value and also the coordinates of the point. First of all, to find the t-value, let's just march it up. From here to here is pi over 4. You've gone three of those little se sector pieces. This would be 2 pi over 4. So this would be 3 pi over 4 over here. t equals 3 pi over 4. So what would be the coordinates of that point? Well, it's the same as radical 2 over 2, comma radical 2 over 2, but you're in the second quadrant now. 
So it becomes negative radical 2 over 2, radical 2 over 2, see? Okay, hit the pause button, see if you can find the t value and the, and the coordinates of these two points in the third and fourth quadrant. Okay, what you should have gotten from the third quadrant is t equal pi over 4. Think about it, pi over 4, 2 pi over 4, 3 pi over 4, 4 pi over 4, 5 pi over 4, and both x and y are negative. And in the, thir in the fourth quadrant, you should have gotten 7 pi over 4, the x is positive and the y is negative. Okay, let's see this. Uh, next point I want to talk about is this one right, right here. We, uh, this is the point corresponding to sorting on 1, 0 and going up pi over 3 units. That, that's, that's 4 of these little pi over 12s, isn't it? Anyway, we'll talk about in class why, why the point is 1, 1 half comma 3 halves for pi over 3. But in the meantime, what I want you to be able to do now is be able to find these points in the second, third, and fourth quadrant that are symmetric with that point. Um, for example, the one in the second quadrant, if you go pi over 3, which is 4 of them, and you go 4 more, you end up over here. So this is t equals 2 pi over 3. And the coordinates, since you're in the second quadrant, same as in the first quadrant, but x is negative and y is positive. You see how it works? Okay, hit the pause button. See if you can find the coordinates of, of the points in the uh, third and fourth quadrant. Okay, what you should have gotten on this one was 4 pi over 3 for t, and the x and y coordinates are both negative. And this one should have been 5 pi over 3, and notice the y coordinates negative. Okay, let's keep on going here. Uh, the last one I want to talk about is this point right here. What happens at uh, this point here? This corresponds to t equal pi over 6, if you think about it. This is pi over 12, this is pi over 12, so you go on pi over 6. Now, why are the coordinates radical 3 over 2, comma, 1 half? We'll talk about that later in class. But for now, I want you to be able to find the coordinates of these points that are symmetric with respect to that point, okay? Again, the 1 in the second quadrant, if you just march it off, pi over 6, 2 pi over 6, 3 pi over 6, 4 pi over 6, 5 pi over 6. This is t equals 5 pi over 6. The, the point's going to be the same as the one in the first quadrant, but x is negative, right? Negative radical 3 over 2, comma, 1 half is the coordinates of this point. Okay, hit the pause button and see if you can find the coordinates of the point in the third and fourth quadrant. Okay, did you get this? In the, th in the third quadrant, you should have gotten 7 pi over 6, remember? Pi over 6, 2 pi over 6, 3 pi over 6, 4 pi over 6, 5 pi over 6, 6 pi over 6, 7 pi over 6. X and Y are both negative. And in the fourth quadrant, you should have gotten t equal 11 pi over 6, and the y coordinates negative. And here. Now we're finally ready. We, we can use that, all that stuff to, to compute some, uh, to find some points in the unit circle. If t equals 3 pi over 4, we're using the pi over 4 as our, think of that as our reference point. 3 pi over 4 is right here, isn't it? So the point would be the same as the pi over 4 one, but x, and y, x is negative. So it's negative radical 2 over 2 y is positive, radical 2 over 2. t is 5 pi over 3, uh, so this is pi over 3, 2 pi over 3, 3 pi over 3, 4 pi over 3, 5 pi over 3 is right there, isn't it? So our reference point right here in the first quadrant is 1 half radical 3 over 2, so since we're in the fourth quadrant, we get 1 half negative radical 3 over 2. It's really important that you're able to do this. The whole, the whole rest of the chapter hinges on this. 7 pi over 6, if you march that off, you'll get right down to here. So the reference uh, point is this pi over 6 point, but since we're in the third quadrant, x and y are both negative. Negative radical 3 over 2, negative 1 half. Negative 2 pi over 3, this is negative pi over 3. Negative 2 pi over 3 is right here, isn't it? So it's the same thing as our, our reference point is, is 1 half radical 3 over 2. We're in the third quadrant now. So they're both negative, so it becomes negative one-half, negative radical three over two, right? Let's keep on, keep on going. We've got two more here. Let's see. Uh, negative three pi over four. Negative three pi over four. Wouldn't that be right here? So our pi over four is our reference point. We're in the third quadrant again. So you get negative radical two over two, negative radical two over two. Uh, last one, t equal negative 12 pi. That's just wrapping around the um, unit circle uh, six times in the clockwise direction. So we get back to where we started, 1 comma 0. Let's, let's do one last thing. Uh, this idea of reference number, the, uh, 
the um, the book talks about that a little bit. It's no big deal. It's actually kind of the same thing as what we were doing already. We I call them reference points. You can think of these as reference numbers as well. Here's what's going on with that. If you march off t equal 3 pi over 4, it's over here, right? We define the reference number to be, to be the shortest distance between the point on the unit circle and the x and the x axis. So this is your reference number. It would be uh, it would be uh, pi over 4. You say t hat equals pi over 4. So that's what we're, when, when, I, when I say bring it back to the first quadrant, use this as your reference point. So it's really is the same idea. You have to adjust for the quadrant though, right? So we're in the um, we're in the second quadrant. So what would be the coordinates of this point? It would be um, negative radical 2 over 2 radical 2 over 2. Okay? If t is negative pi over 3, then uh, again, the reference number would be um, would be well first of all the, the t equals negative pi over 3 is right down there so the reference number is the shortest distance uh, to the x-axis again it's pi over 3 which is what which is what we're talking about when we talk about our reference point right there we're in the fourth quadrant though so you would have to adjust for the sign so what would be the coordinates of that point it would be one half negative radical 3 over 2. Okay. For 4 pi over 3, uh, that would put us right down here, wouldn't it? Uh, so the reference um, number would be pi over 3. We go back to our first quadrant and look at that point. But since we're in the third quadrant, they're both negative. Negative 1 half, negative radical 3 over 2, right? T, we're almost done. T equal negative 7 pi over 6. Let's see, our reference, negative 7 pi over 6 puts us, right, puts us right here. So our reference number is pi over 6. That's the smallest distance between uh, this point and the x-axis. So we go back to the point in the first quadrant. We're in the second quadrant, though. So it's going to be negative radical 3 over 2, 1 half, right? Last one, negative 13 pi over 3. Think of it like this. Think of it as negative 12 pi over 3 plus negative pi over 3, which is negative 4 pi plus negative pi over 3. Now, negative 4 pi, isn't that just going around the circle clockwise twice? So you, you end up you end up right down here. Uh, so the reference number is pi over 3, and the point on the unit circle is going to be the same as for the pi over 3, except we're in the fourth quadrant. 1 half, negative radical 3 over 2. That'll do it. See you next time. Bye-bye.